everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all doing really good. I am definitely doing good today because I'm excited for this video and for what we're doing. I have a bunch of Christmassy things planned, two DIYs and some Swedish Christmas food that I want to share with you. It's a beautifully sunny day out. It's streaming in through the window and this also makes me super happy because so far November has been pretty great. But I'm sitting here at my table. I'm ready to do the first DIY and it's uh, for Christmas stars. I don't know if you know about this, maybe you've seen it in my previous videos, but here in Sweden we're really into stars at Christmas. We have them in our windows with lights in them and you can also decorate your Christmas tree with uh, paper stars or uh, whatnot and you can also hang them around the house and I saw this DIY last year. I never got around to making it but this year I've already started and I want to show you how to do it because it's really simple but it's really beautiful and I can show you what it looks like already because yesterday my sister came over and uh, we did some crafts uh, which is something I think is really nice as well with uh, friends or family that you can have a day where you meet up and you make some Christmas ornaments and it's a really lovely thing to do together. But anyways, this is what they look like and um, you can make them in different sizes and you can sort of vary the shape a little bit depending on how wide you fold the paper. As you can see, this one is obviously smaller than that, but you can also see that the um, what do we call these prongs <laughs> that I've folded this one much tighter than this and maybe you can see it even more clearly here because these are the same width but they are folded differently this is folded wider and this is folded um, tighter I guess uh, excuse my uh, interesting English <laughs> but um, what you need is some paper and it's good to have some craft paper that is a bit thicker actually, which is what I have here for these smaller ones. And I bought this um, just at a, a chain store where they sell a bunch of craft things. And it has many different papers, different colors and um, patterns. And this is my favorite. So I think we must make a start with this one. I don't know if you can see from there, but it has some gold inlay, which I think is really pretty. But I also got some Christmas wrapping paper. And if you have Christmas wrapping paper lying around at home, please use that. I actually have stopped using wrapping paper, but I bought it especially for doing this. So I got three colors and they look like this. I don't even know if you can see, but I'll show you closer in a minute. Um, so I got two different shades of green and a sort of natural paper. And they also have some patterns in them. Of course, you can just use plain, uh, do you say plain, non-patterned, plain paper, different colors, whatever color you want, whatever combination of colors you like. And yeah, you just fold them, you use some, string and some glue to put it together and then you can hang them up i have some twine here as well that i'm gonna hang it up with so then i will just oh i will in a minute cut some holes and put this twine through and for the center here where you use some string i've just got this yarn like a thin yarn but uh, that kind of string that you use in the kitchen sometimes uh, would work perfectly uh, i don't know what you call that but it's a thin string but quite sturdy so that it uh, holds when you are tying it i tried with a sewing thread first and that didn't go very well you also need some glue and you need some scissors because at the ends here to get these lovely pointy shapes you need to cut that you also need to cut the paper obviously if you're using wrapping paper and i also have uh what was i thinking with these i actually don't know but you can also use these kind of um silky ribbons these are obviously not silk they're vegan uh, but um these kind of silky ribbons to hang the stars as well i think that's what i was thinking um, <laughs> And let me think, I think that's all you need. I can write down in the description box what uh, the different things you need to make these. But now let's make a couple so that you can see the process and then we're gonna hang them up together. So let's go. Thank you. 
So as you could see, making these stars is pretty easy. It's just a bunch of folding, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of gluing, and I'm really happy with the result. I think it looks really sweet. You can obviously make them in any color you want, any combination of color colors you want, hang them with any kind of string you want. So there's like an infinite amount of possibilities. You can make them really big, really small. And yeah, I think it's a really fun thing to do. It would also be great to do with kids, I think. It's not too complicated and a fun thing to do together as a family or as a group of friends like I already said. I like to say everything twice if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Anyways, I've hung these. I think they look lovely in my living room. I'm gonna go hang a couple in my bedroom as well, the small pinky red ones that I showed you before. And I'm also going to show you the macrame wall hanging that a lot of you have been wondering about since I showed it in a video like um, a year and a half or two years ago or something. It took me a very long time to come to the stages and now it's still not fully finished but I thought uh, I must just show you now because I've kept it too long so let's go do that to the kitchen to have a little bit of tea and some gingerbread biscuits. This is probably the most popular treat here in Sweden around Chris Christmas time. Can't say Christmas. <laughs> Christmas time. And um, I totally understand why. Maybe because I'm Swedish or maybe because they're just delicious. They're sweet, they're crisp, they're full of warming spices and I can't get enough of them around this time of year. I'm gonna have some of those and I'm also going to give you a little Christmas gift tip and at the same time thank our sponsor Nordgren for sponsoring this video. Nordgren is a Danish watch brand with an ethos that each step from production to delivery should be sustainable and they make really beautiful and timeless pieces and something that I really appreciate is that they offer lots of vegan strap options so that you can change it up as you go, style it in different ways and this makes it a piece that you can keep for a lifetime and uh, use again and again. Nordgren's sustainability focus shows through them choosing sustainable packaging and carbon neutral shipping as well as through their giving back program in which they work with NGOs in different social and environmental protection programs. For Christmas, Nogin is partnering up with Toys for Tots. They gather and distribute presents for less privileged children in the US. Make sure to use the code TOYS at checkout to be part of this program. Today I'm wearing Nordgren's Unica watch with a black vegan leather strap. I also have a gold link strap that I can change to if I want to dress the watch up a little bit more. And like I said, Nordgren offer lots of vegan strap options. So there's mesh, there's link, there's nylon, and there's vegan leather in different colors. I've tried all of them at this point and I really like the look of all of them for different occasions. Uh, and like I said, it's fun to be able to switch them up. The Unica watch itself is, I think, Nordgren's most feminine watch. The face is very minimal, without any numbers or details, but the attachment by the strap is really beautiful and unique, as it comes away a little bit from the face itself, and this creates lots of interest. Nordgren offer many different styles though, so there's something to suit everyone, and I really like that if you get a watch with an extra strap, it comes in this really beautiful navy hard cardboard box, which I think makes a lovely gift, you don't even really need to wrap it. But anyway, enough about this now. If you want to check out Nordgren, there's a link in the description box and of course you can use my code for a discount if you do want to make a purchase. Now let's keep going with some more Christmassy fun stuff. Let's make some food and today I'm going to be making some little sandwiches with Swedish meatballs, vegan of course, and beetroot salad which I've done on the channel before so I'll make sure to uh, link the um, video somewhere here and in the description box as well but what I'm gonna make that's new that I don't think I made on the channel before is uh, rice porridge or rice pudding I think you would say in other countries but we actually eat it warm and I'm going to be using this rice it's a very short sort of round grain and when you cook it it actually takes about an hour ish to make but when you cook it it becomes really um, 
silky and creamy, almost like making a risotto, except you don't have to stir so much. Um, but we make it sweet and we eat it warm with some sugar and cinnamon. I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a little uh, Christmassy treat of a meal for today. So uh, let's make it. the kind of food that I like to make the day before the day we celebrate which is the 24th uh, Christmas Eve so on the 23rd I like to eat this and I don't really know why it's just become a thing here in Sweden a lot of Swedes actually play bingo the night before Christmas Eve. I'm, I'm sure that sounds really weird if you're not from Sweden, uh, but I like to eat this as I play bingo, as a sort of social meal. This is also the kind of food you often make from leftovers from the Christmas, from the Christmas Eve lunch or dinner. Um, and I just find this super yummy. We actually eat this kind of sandwich uh, just um, on a regular basis as well in cafes, but um, it's quite hard to find a vegan one. But I did find both the meatballs, the vegan meatballs pre-made from the frozen section in the supermarket and the beetroot salad from uh, the fridge section and it tastes pretty good although I do like the homemade version better and I have that recipe on yeah here on YouTube in a video on Instagram in a story you know a story highlight and on the website of course I'll make sure to link it everywhere if you want to try it and uh, the porridge is really super simple I'll write the instructions and the measurements in the description box for you if you want to make that. I'm also having a little bit of fizzy drink which we don't do that much. I'm not a huge fan because I find the um, aeration a little um, annoying. It makes me burp. <laughs> but um, this is Julmust. It's a traditional Swedish Christmas drink. I actually don't know what makes it taste uh, the way it tastes but ah, it has hops in it. Uh, and malt. So it is similar to the flavor of Coca-Cola, but it has a little bit of bitterness to it. And I guess that comes from the hops. It has a very specific flavor. Um, I hope you get to try it sometime if you're interested. It is just like a sweet fizzy drink. And to me, it just tastes like Christmas. I've also got some um, clementines, which is my favorite. Christmas winter fruit 
and some more ginger biscuits, gingerbread biscuits. We call these pepparkaka. And this porridge we call risgrynsgröt. And I want to say this because Rob finds this so funny. Basically, risgrynsgröt in direct translation is rice grain porridge. And Rob always say, says that the Swedish language is so literal. And uh, this is a funny example of that rice grain porridge. It's very literal. And his other favorite is grönsak, which means vegetable. But uh, in direct translation, it's green thing or grön saker, green things which yeah it's quite hilarious actually when you think about it but um, now we must eat this I'm super hungry the day is flying by it takes a minute to make um, DIY stuff it's fun but it takes a minute so we're definitely hungry we're gonna eat this and while we eat I thought I'd uh, send you off <laughs> a little montage of some other Christmas decorations we've already made and hung and done because I did a similar video to this last year where we did a lot of those things. So I'll make sure to link that down below as well. And I'm going to make a Christmas video playlist for you on the channel in case you want to watch all the Christmas videos we've already done. But yes, off you go on your montage and I shall eat my lunch. kitchen for the last stretch for the last project I had in mind for this video which is a gingerbread garland I think this should work I'm not hundred percent sure so you will be my witness as I try this out I saw this beautiful video and photo by Linda Lomelino on Instagram. Uh, she's a really talented Swedish food photographer and baker. And she made all these lovely little houses out of gingerbread uh, that she then frosted uh, to make little windows and or or ornations, I was going to say, <laughs> ornaments um, with little dots and whatnot. So I'm going to try my hand at this. I've actually bought a pre-made gingerbread dough. Here in Sweden it's very common and most people just buy it ready-made like that but I can link down below a vegan recipe if you want to make your own. And so it's going to be very similar to the little um, biscuits I've been eating today but I'm going to make them slightly bigger and in the shapes, shapes, shape or shapes? who knows, of houses and uh, little Christmas trees. And then we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna make little holes before I bake them and then try to hang it up. Wish me luck. Uh, I think it's gonna be fun. So let's make some.
background so I think we can all sign on me not being that good at icing but I would also like to say that I don't think this was the best choice for icing like this. It's a bit too thick uh, so it doesn't come out smoothly and easily and if you want to make you know thin straight lines and little uh, dots uh, this didn't really work it's way too thick and also the nozzle when I cut it I think I cut it too far down so it's quite wide and it looks a bit clunky but then also I must just admit that I don't think I have the skills to try and recreate Linda Lomelino's lovely uh, piping but if you're a uh, icing piping fiend if you like it this would be perfect for you also i would uh, say that this was all in all a bit of a fail because i also managed to somehow get the gingerbread to look cracked i think i didn't um what you call it uh, knead it enough to make it smooth and uh, what was fun though was cutting out all the different shapes and making the buildings and the little i like the shape of this one which was gonna be like a little um uh, christmas tree as you can tell i'm a little bit tired now because i can't find my words even more than this morning uh but yeah i think if you don't have a lot of patience which is like me, then maybe this is not for you. Maybe you are the one who bakes the cookies and someone else can do the piping. But anyways, it was fun to try. If I manage to get this up on a garland or on a string, I'll show you that. But if not, this was my try, uh, my trial run at making a gingerbread garland. Maybe you'll be more successful if you try it. And if you make it, please send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Anyways, um, what I would like to say is last year I did a garland with dried oranges and that was much more successful in my opinion and easier also. Took less time and um, yeah, was less fiddly. But uh, I mean, sometimes you want the fiddly. It can be very relaxing and enjoyable to do a little bit of crafts at home. And this could have been more fun than it was. Maybe if I had a better piping bag and some thinner icing, maybe I could have um, worked on my skills a little bit, but now I just mainly got frustrated. But now I've been talking about this forever. Um, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of Christmas festivities with me and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye! <laughs>